Hello and welcome back to another podcast. And today we will be talking about the history of Christmas. Christmas is celebrated on December 25th and is both a sacred religious holiday and a worldwide cultural and commercial phenomenon for two millennia. People around the world have been observing it with traditions and practices that are both religious and secular in nature. Christians celebrate Christmas Day as the anniversary of the birth of Jesus of Nazareth, a spiritual leader whose teachings form the basis of their religion. Popular customs include exchanging gifts, decorating Christmas trees, attending church, sharing meals with family and friends, and of course, waiting for Santa Claus to arrive. December 25th, Christmas Day has been a federal holiday in the United States since 1870. How did Christmas start? The middle of winter has long been a time of celebration around the world. Centuries before the arrival of the man called Jesus, early Europeans celebrated light and birth in the darkest days of winter. Many peoples rejoiced during the winter solstice when the worst of the winter was behind them and they could look forward to longer days and extended hours of sunlight. In Scandinavia, the Norse celebrated Yule from December 21st, the winter solstice through January, in recognition of the return of the sun, fathers and sons would bring home large logs, which they would set on fire. The people would feast until the log burned out, which could take as many as 12 days. The Norse believed that each spark from the fire represented a new pig or calf that would be born during the coming year. The end of December was a perfect time for celebration in most areas of Europe. At that time of the year, most cattle were slaughtered so they would not have to be fed during the winter. For many, it was the only time of year when they had a supply of fresh meat. In addition, most wine and beer made during the year was finally fermented and ready for drinking. In Germany, people honored the pagan god Odin during the midwinter holiday. Germans were terrified of Odin as they believed he made nocturnal flights through the sky to observe his people and then decide who would prosper or or perish. Because of his presence, many people chose to stay inside. Saturnalia In Rome, where winters were not as harsh as those in the far north, Saturnalia, a holiday in honor of Saturn, the god of agriculture, was celebrated beginning in the week leading up to the winter solstice and continuing for a full month. Saturnalia was a hedonistic time when food and drink were plentiful and the normal Roman social order was turned upside down. For a month, enslaved people were given temporary freedom and treated as equals. Business and schools were closed so that everyone could participate in the holiday's festivities. Also around the time of the winter solstice, Romans observed Juvenalia, a feast honoring the children of Rome. In addition, members of the upper classes often celebrated the birthday of Mithra, the god of the unconquerable sun, on December 25th. It was believed that Mithra, an infant god, was born of a rock. For some Romans, Mithra's birthday was the most sacred day of the year. Is Christmas really the day Jesus was born? In the early years of Christianity, Easter was the main holiday. The birth of Jesus was not celebrated. In the 4th century, church officials decided to institute the birth of Jesus as a holiday. Unfortunately, the Bible does not mention date for his birth, a fact Puritans later pointed out in order to deny the legitimacy of the celebration. Although some evidence suggests that his birth may have occurred in the spring, why would shepherds be herding in the middle of the winter? Pope Julius I chose December 25th. It is commonly believed that the church chose this date in an effort to adopt and absorb the traditions of the pagan 
Saturnalia festival first called the Feast of Nativity. The custom spread to Egypt by 432 and to England by the end of the 6th century. By holding Christmas at the same time as traditional winter solstice festivals, church leaders increased the chances that Christmas would be popular, embraced, but gave up the ability to dictate how it was celebrated by the Middle Ages. Christianity had, for the most part, replaced pagan religion on Christmas. Believers intended church, then celebrated miraculously in a drunken carnival-like atmosphere similar to Today's Mardi Gras. Each year, a beggar or student would be crowned the Lord of Misrule, and eager celebrants played the part of his subjects. The poor would go to the houses of the rich and demand their best food and drink. If owners failed to comply, their visitors would most likely terrorize them with mischief. Christmas became the time of year when the upper classes would, could repay their real or imagined debt to society by entertaining less fortunate citizens. When Christmas was canceled, in the early 17th century, a wave of religious reform changed the way Christmas was celebrated in Europe. When Oliver Cromwell and his Puritan forces took over England in 1645, they vowed to rid England of a dedicance and, as part of their effort, canceled Christmas. By popular demand, Charles II was restored to the throne, and with him came the return of the popular holiday. The Pilgrims' English separatists that came to America in 1620 were even more orthodox in their Puritan beliefs than Cromwell. As a result, Christmas was not a holiday in early America from 1659 to 1681. The celebration of Christmas was actually outlawed in Boston. Anyone exhibiting the Christmas spirit was fined five shillings, by contrast, in the Jamestown settlement. Captain John Smith reported that Christmas was enjoyed by all and passed without incident. After the American Revolution, English customs fell out of favor, including Christmas. In fact, Christmas wasn't declared a federal holiday until June 26, 1870. Washington Irving reinvents Christmas. It wasn't until the 19th century that Americans began to embrace Christmas. Americans reinvented Christmas and changed it from a raucous carnival holiday into a family-centered day of peace and nostalgia. But what about the 1800s peaked American interest in the holiday? The early 19th century was a period of class conflict and turmoil. During this time, unemployment was high and gang rioting by the disenchantment classes often occurred during the Christmas season in 1828. The New York City Council instituted the city's first police force in response to a Christmas riot. This catalyzed certain members of the upper classes to begin to change the way Christmas was celebrated in America. In 1819, Best-selling author Washington Irving wrote the sketchbook of Geoffrey G- Crown Gint, a series of stories about the celebration of Christmas in an English manor house. The sketches featured a squire who invited the peasants into his home for the holiday. In contrast to the problems faced in American size, society, The two groups mingled effortlessly in Irving's mind. Christmas should be a peaceful, warm-hearted holiday, bringing groups together across lines of wealth or social status. Irving's fictitious celebrations enjoyed ancient customs, including the crowning of a lord of misrule. Irving's book, however, was not based on any holiday celebration he had attended. In fact, Many historians say that Irving's account actually invented tradition by implying that it described the true customs of the season. A Christmas Carol. Also around this time, English author Charles Dickens created the classic holiday tale, A Christmas Carol. The story's message, the importance of charity and good will towards all human kind 
struck a powerful chord in the United States and England and showed members of Victorian society the benefits of celebrating the holiday. The family was also becoming less disciplined and more sensitive to the emotional needs of children during the early 1800s. Christmas for families was a day when they could lavish attend attention and gifts on their children without appearing to spoil them. As Americans began to embrace Christmas as a perfect family holiday, old customs were in unearth. People looked toward recent immigrants and Catholic Escapolian churches to see how the day should be celebrated in the next 100 years. Americans built a Christmas tradition all their own that included pieces of many other customs, including decorating trees, sending holiday cards, and gift-giving. Although most families quickly bought into the idea that they were celebrating Christmas how it had been for centuries, Americans had really reinvented a holiday to fill the cultural needs of a growing nation. Who Invented Santa Claus? The legend of Santa Claus can be traced back to a monk named St. Nicholas, who was born in Turkey around 280 AD. St. Nicholas gave away all of his inherited wealth and traveled the countryside helping the poor and sick, becoming known as the protector of children and sailors. St. Nicholas first entered American popular culture in the late 18th century in New York when Dutch families gathered to honor the anniversary of the Death of St. Nicholas, Dutch for St. Nicholas, or Santa Claus, for short, Santa Claus, draws his name from this abbreviation. In 1822, Episcopal Minister Clement Clark Moore wrote a Christmas poem called An Account of a Visit from St. Nicholas, more popularly known today by its first line, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas." The poem depicted Santa Claus as a jolly man who flies from home to home on a sled driven by reindeer to deliver toys. The iconic version of Santa Claus as a jolly man in red with a right beard and a sack of toys was immortalized in 1881 when political cartoonist Thomas Nash drew on Moore's poem to create the image of old St. Nick we know today. Christmas Facts each year, 30 to 35 million real Christmas trees are sold in the United States alone. There are about 21,000 Christmas tree growers in the United States, and trees usually grow for about 15 years before they are sold. In the Middle Ages, Christmas celebrations were rowdy and raucous, a lot like today's Mardi Gras parties. When Christmas was canceled from 1659 to 1681, the celebration of Christmas was outlawed in Boston and lawbreakers were fined five shillings. Christmas was declared a federal holiday in the United States on June 26, 1870. The first eggnog made in the United States was consumed in Captain John Smith's 1607 Jamestown Settlement. Poinsettia plants are named after Joe R. Poinsett, an American minister to Mexico who brought the red and green plant from Mexico to America in 1828. The Salvation Army has been sending Santa Claus-clad donation collectors into the streets since the 1890s. Rudolph, the most famous reindeer of all, was the product of Robert L. May's imagination in 1939. The copywriter wrote a poem about the reindeer to help lure customers into the Montgomery Ward department store. Construction workers started the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree, tree tradition in 1931. That is it for today, and I hope to see you next time.